All right, seven, eight, we are, we're going to combine all the, the last three, four sections that we've done. Okay, we're going to bring all the factoring stuff together um, and we're going to deal with it all at once. But before we do that, we've got one more new type of factoring that we need to talk about. And our new type of factoring is going to deal with four terms. We haven't dealt with four terms yet. So we're going to look at something like this. Okay, copy that down. Yeah, x to the third plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6. What's the very first thing we always look for? Every single time. Jack, not count a denominator. I know what you mean. AJ? Greatest common factor. Okay, I know what you mean. Greatest common factor, right? Does this have a greatest common factor? between all four terms. No, there's nothing that all four terms have in common. So we can't do anything there. We can't break it up into either seven, five or seven, six, the last couple of things that we've done. There's no shortcut that we can do. So it has to be something new. And what we're gonna do is called grouping. Grouping. And we're gonna, we're gonna factor by grouping here. So what this looks like is we're going to take our four terms, and this is always this, we can only do this with four terms. Okay. We're going to take those four terms, we're going to split them up into two and two. Okay, I'm going to split them up into two and two. So I'm going to group these two together. I'm going to group these two together. And just know that we're still adding these two groups together. So there's still an addition sign in between. All right, so I'm going to group the first two, the last two together in parentheses. So from there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at just one set of parentheses at a time. If I look at that first set of parentheses, do I have a GCF now? Okay, what's the GCF between these two? X to the second. X squared, right? X to the second, X squared. So I got a GCF of X squared there. Whatever's left over, I'm going to write in the parentheses. I took two x's away, so I've got one x left. I took the x squared away, I've got a three left over. So I took the GCF out of just the first two. I'm going to do the same thing with the last two. What's my GCF between two x and six? Two. It's a positive two, right? So I'm going to put a plus two there because it's a positive two. What's left over in the parentheses? Jackson? X plus three. X plus three. Okay, by doing this, and you see it right there, by doing this, we have the same thing in both sets of parentheses. So what we can do, and this is, this is the part that we gotta understand here. We're gonna take those two sets of parentheses, basically treating them like a GCF. Like I've got two terms and they both share the X minus or the X plus three. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put that X plus three out in front. Okay, I'm gonna combine those into one set of parentheses, one X plus three. The other set of parentheses is what's out front. My two GCFs, I'm gonna take that X squared and that plus two, that's gonna become X squared plus two. That's gonna be my other set of parentheses. So this right here is my factor form. All right, that's my factor form. If I were to foil that, I get right back up to the original. Okay, so we've got our process here. We group it, find the GCF of each half, write whatever's left over. If whatever's left over is the same, we can combine that and then what's out in front into the other. Let's walk our way through one more here together and then I'll start having to do some. Okay, 
right? So here's our next example. A to the third plus three a squared plus three plus a. I'm gonna talk through it again. If you wanna go through it and you think you know what you're doing, great, do it. Well, I'm gonna talk through it up here as well. So I group it, first two, last two. Find my GCF, the GCF of the first two is gonna be a squared. And left in the parentheses is gonna be an a plus three. And with my last set, it doesn't have anything in common. A three and an a, there's no GCF. What is, well, there is a GCF. What is my GCF? If they have nothing else in common, then what's my GCF? One. So I have to have a plus one out there. You have to take something out, even if it's just a one. You have to have something out in front of it. So I've gotten to this point where I've taken those GCFs out. We look at my parentheses. Is A plus three the same thing as three plus A? It's the same exact thing, right? Doesn't matter what order you're at it. Same exact thing. So those can combine into one set of parentheses. What's going to go in my other set of parentheses here? AJ? The greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. All right. So A squared plus one would be in that other one. Any questions on that? Okay, let me give you one. You do on your own here. We're gonna make things a little bit more difficult now that we've got the hang of it a little bit. I want you to copy this one down. I don't want you to solve anything yet or factor anything. I just want you to write it down and then we'll talk for a second and I'll let you go. X squared plus Y plus X plus XY. So if we look at this, and, and I don't want you to write anything down yet, okay, I just want to mentally think about this. If I group these two together, is there a GCF? No, it's a one, right? So left in the parentheses, I'd have x squared plus y. Am I going to get an x squared plus y in this set of parentheses? No. No. So this is where our warm-up comes in. We can rearrange this addition problem, right? We can rearrange it, rewrite it so that we have things together that we think should go together. And that's all I'm going to tell you as a hint. So I want you to rearrange it, get things together that you think might go together well, and then go ahead and factor. Okay, try it out. Try it on your own, and then I'll give you a chance to talk to somebody. So rearrange that so you think it might work for us. I right, all right, here we go. Raise your hand, tell me, how did you rearrange this? How did you rearrange it so that something would uh, easily group together? Here? Um, I rearranged it x squared plus x plus y plus x squared. Great. So you can do that. And by rearrange it differently. Yeah. So I did x squared plus x1 plus x1 
Okay, good. We can do either one of them. Good. So let's take a look. We'll start with the, the first one. Okay, we group it. We take out the GCF of an X. Remember, when you take out the X, if you take out the entire thing, you got to have a one there as a placeholder, right? So you got to have an X plus one in there. Here, my GCF is a Y. I don't have anything left, so there's a one. I have an X left, so I have a one plus X. We already said these are the same thing, so we're good there. So we combine those X plus one and X plus Y. Great. Okay, that works. Let's look at this way. We combine these. Okay, a GCF of an X here. I'm left with X plus Y. I don't have anything in common, so it's a one, and I have an X plus Y. They still end up the same. Okay, I end up with X plus Y, X plus one. Everything is good. Those are the exact same answers. Okay. Does not matter what order those parentheses go. Good. Good. Any questions on that? We're going to do one more just because I need to point something out. And then we'll be done with the new stuff. Let me find it here. So, I'm sure it's minus two x plus two y minus x y. Let's try it. Go ahead, group it. Let's see what we can do. Careful those negatives. Right? Take those negatives with you if you're moving stuff around. It belongs to the term after it. Okay, discuss it with somebody. Do they did. See if it worked out. All right, so this is the way that I rearranged it. You could have rearranged it differently. But I group these together. My GCF here is a Y. That's going to leave me with Y plus two. What would my GCF be between these two here, Ben? Okay, if I took an X out, let's look at that. If I took an X out, I'm left with negative two minus Y. Are those two the same thing? No. No. So what should I do instead, Brady? Negative X. If I, if I take out a negative X, that's going to take those negatives away. Now I have a positive two and a positive Y. Now those are going to match up. So there are going to be times where you're really close. You're close to having the same thing in the parentheses. Maybe just taking that negative out and changing the signs is going to make it work. Okay. And in this case, it'll make it work. We're left with Y minus X and Y plus two for those two sets of parentheses. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay, if we need to take out a negative, then we do that. Okay, all right. Good deal. Anything on grouping? Any questions on grouping? All right, we are going to put everything together now. 
Okay, we are going to make a chart here that's going to help us out know what to do because the the issue guys is the last four sections have all been about factors but it's always been factor using this way factor using this way factor using the shortcut factor using grouping right they've always told you from here on out they're just going to give you a polynomial they're going to say factor and you're not going to know exactly what type of factoring they want okay so we got to figure out and that's going to be today's homework that's going to be monday's test it's just gonna say factor. It's not gonna say factor like 7.6, okay? You have to know what we're doing. So let's talk about factoring in general here. We're gonna make a chart, put that factoring in the middle. You're gonna need some space. Okay, we're gonna make a chart here. And what did we say is the very first thing that we have to do every single time, every single problem here, Donna? Greatest common factor. So step one is check for GCF. We have to do that first thing every single time. And if there's a GCF, we got to take it out, write whatever's left in parentheses. Okay, that is the number one thing we have to do every single time. Okay. Once we do that, we're going to have three different situations here. We're either going to have two terms, three terms, or four terms. So depending on how many terms we have, and this could be just we have two terms, or it could be after we took the GCF out, what's left over in the parentheses, right? In those parentheses, if we have two terms, or three terms, or four terms. If we have two terms, there's only one thing that we can do. Okay, there's only one thing we can do. We can check for the difference of squares. We're going to check for the difference of squares. Maybe you recall that was 7.7. Uh, .7. That was at 7.7. .7. That was that a squared minus b squared. We factor it down to a plus b, a minus b. That's the only thing that we can do with two terms. If it doesn't fit that pattern, then there's nothing else we can do and we're done. But if it can fit that pattern, if it does fit that pattern, we have to break it up into that a plus b, a minus b. We have to do that. Okay. So again, if, if this is a no, it's not a difference in squares, then you're done at that point. All right, three terms. We want to check for the perfect square pattern. Check for the perfect square pattern. That's that square the first, square the last. Does the middle term work? All right, that's 7.7 .7 again. We're going to check for that. If it works, great. Let's do that. That's a shortcut. Makes it easier on us. But if it doesn't work, we're left with two situations here. We either have x squared plus bx plus c, in which case that's 7.5. That's what factors of c add up to b. Or we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So we've got that coefficient out in front. That's our five step process. All right, that's that long one. That's that 7.6, the five step process. You know, it's a lot of writing here, but I'm trying to get us organized so that we can follow this chart while we're doing our homework, while we're studying. Four terms, we just talked about the only thing we can do is group it. Some pointing. Okay, after we do all of that, okay, after we do that, we've got two things that we need to double check for. So after we think we're done, okay, 
we've done the difference of squares or we've done factoring or we've done grouping, whatever. There's two things that we have to double check for. Okay, I'm going to put them down here. I don't know why I start with the number one and then have no other numbers. I have no good answer for that. But we've got two things that we got to double check at the end. One of them, we got to check for difference of squares. You got to check for difference of squares because, guys, once we get our answers, once we get those two sets of parentheses, right? Let's say I've got my two sets of parentheses. I end up with x plus one and x squared minus four as my two sets of parentheses. One of those sets of parentheses could be a difference of squares. And if this is a difference of squares, I have to keep going. So at the end, as soon as you get your two sets of parentheses, right? All of these are going to give us two sets of parentheses. Once you get there, you have to check to make sure that that's not a difference of squares. And this is. So in this case, I would make, I would factor this. I would make this x plus 2x minus 2. And so my whole answer would be like that. So we got to keep going if there's a difference of squares. Okay, you have to double check for the difference of squares. Otherwise, you didn't factor enough. You might run into that in the homework. You might run in, into it in the test. Okay, the other thing that we have to double check for is, uh, I'll say, did I miss a GCF? Because I know I've stressed how important finding a GCF is, but what if we missed it, right? What if we didn't take the biggest GCF? What if we just took the, the CF instead of the greatest common factor? We just took a common factor, okay? Let's say that we get to the end and we end up with this as our answer. Well, there's a GCF in there. This, if there's a GCF in one of your two sets of parentheses, that means you missed the GCF at the beginning. So you can either go back and try to fix it from the start and start all over, or just take the GCF now. GCF is four, so take that four out in front. Okay, so at the end, just double check. Just double check to see, hey, did I miss a GCF? And if I did, let's take it out. Okay. I'm trying to make it so that you guys can follow this and make sure that we're getting things right. Remember, we can always double check our answer as well by foiling it, getting it back to the original. We're not going to practice this right now because you've done everything that's listed here. You know how to do all this It's in your notes, all of this. It's just a matter of following that chart and doing the right thing at the right time. Any questions about it right now? Okay. Go ahead, guys.